Hey guys! So today I am filming a uh, sort of, I wouldn't say it's like out of the topic of my channel because I feel like my channel has turned into sort of a lifestyle type channel. I um, mean you guys know that I studied abroad in Korea for um, almost a little over five months or around five months um, and I got back a couple months ago and I miss it like crazy but I wanted to do a video um, that I think is similar to a lot of videos here on YouTube, but, um, sort of share my own opinions, and that is a five things I hated about Korea video, and, um, disclaimer ahead of time, this is not a bash on Korea video, these are just some things that I noticed that I didn't really enjoy while I was there. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is the, um, reaction to being foreign. I feel like this is probably the most straightforward one, the most, the one that's most prominent in um, what people talk about on YouTube. So obviously I look foreign, obviously I don't look Korean, and when you go to Korea I don't think people realize, especially if you grew up in somewhere like the United States or somewhere in North America, I feel like a lot of people don't realize how homogenous Korea is. So it is, I think at this point, I don't remember the last time I checked the stats, I think it's 98% Korean um, people and foreigners, it's like 2% foreigners. So, um, I had foreign friends while I was there. I also met people who were Chinese and Singaporean and, um, Indonesian and Japanese. Um, I had, I mean, I knew people that were Korean, but I wasn't like close friends with anybody who was Korean while I was there. Um, and my roommates were foreign. But when you go out and about, and I do speak Korean, um, so I did speak Korean to people, it's just the fact that everywhere you go, you're going to get stared at, and it's not necessarily I blame them or anything, because of course a lot of people haven't had exposure to foreigners in their lifetime, um, if they're Korean and they grew up born and raised in Korea, because there's not a lot of foreigners there, but I don't know, I guess it's just something I'm not used to. Here I'm just sort of like invisible, because everyone is foreign in America, but in Korea it's not the same. So everywhere you go, you're going to get stared at. Um, me and my friends used to joke about it being putting on our foreigner hats because um, whenever you like ride escalators up out of the subway system and people are coming down on the other escalator, they're all like eyes glued on you. You can feel them staring and people will just outwardly stare and don't care at all. Um, I was in a store with my friend shopping for groceries and there was this group, this was on our campus. Um, so I thought the kids on our campus would be more sort of used to foreigners because there is a large exchange student and um, foreign um, international student population at KU. Um, so I thought they would just be used to it, but there's this group of three guys and we were in the same aisle as them and I think Koreans have this assumption that foreigners don't speak Korean. So there were a lot of Koreans that would whisper about us behind our backs, but this was probably the most straightforward thing I had ever heard someone say. So, um, it was this group of guys and they were, looked at us and we didn't think anything of it until we went to the next aisle and they said, uh, which means like, I hate foreigners. And, um, I was so taken aback because I was, I just couldn't believe that they would say something so openly about us when we're, you know, right next to them. But I think it's because they assumed we didn't speak Korean, so they thought they could just openly trash talk about us. Um, so... Things like that are something that you're going to have to get used to if you're foreign and you understand Korean. If you don't understand Korean, you'll probably have a better time because um, you won't understand what people are talking about you. But I had quite a few times, me and my friends had quite a few times where we directly heard people talking about us. And they talk about you in Korean because they think you don't know, but uh, that's really not the right assumption to make. Because if I'm living in Korea, you should assume I know Korean rather than not because bad situation for you. So the next thing is shopping for clothing slash makeup. So obviously I did a lot of shopping while I was there, but clothing wise, it's really, really, really hard to shop for clothing there. This in particular is from a plus size Korean uh, site on G Market. So in America, I'm not considered plus size, but in Korea, I'm definitely considered plus size. <clears throat> so that made clothing shopping really, really hard because a lot of the just standard clothing shops don't sell anything except for one size. And one size is in America, I'd say mm, maybe up to a four at like best, um, but definitely like a two is usually like I think what standards, you know, one size fits all fits when you're in Korea. 
So it definitely made shopping for clothing really hard, especially as I was transitioning into the winter seasons and I didn't pack a ton of like winter clothes with me. So I ended up wearing my KU jacket all the time because it was like the only warm jacket that I had that fit me. Um, and then my leather jacket ended up getting worn out because I wore that one all the time. Um, shoes I didn't have a problem with. I'm an uh, eBay Gold Sheep, which is 250 in Korean size, which is pretty standard. Um, I'm an 8 in American sizes, so I think uh, eBay Gold Sheep, which is 255, is usually what they go up to, which I think is like an 8.5 or a 9. Um, so if you're any bigger than that, you're going to have issues, but um, I was pretty standard for Korean shoe sizes, so I definitely didn't have a problem buying shoes, and I bought a lot. Um, and makeup, I bought a ton of makeup while I was in Korea, but almost everything that I bought were lip products or like cheek products, any kind of color products. Uh, I didn't buy any, I don't think I bought any foundation or BB cream or anything like that while I was in Korea because it's a very standard color. And when I got to Korea, it was the end of summer here in America, so I was slightly darker than I normally am. And as winter started approaching, um, I could fit Korean like cushion colors, but it was too late for me to really buy anything because I just didn't care at that point because um, I was about to fly home. But uh, if you're darker than me, which uh, I'm pretty pale, if you're darker than me, then you're going to have issues finding like foundation and things like that, that kind of makeup, base makeup. But um, other color makeup I've had no issue with and makeup there is really cheap actually, so um, wasn't too bad. Um, so my third item is being stared at, but I think that pretty much goes into the reaction towards being foreign. Um, so I'm going to skip that one for now, so maybe it'll only be uh, four things. Um, the next is the accessibility to money slash ordering stuff, etc. So this one only really applies if you live there for an extended amount of time. Um, so like I said, I lived there for around five months, and there were definitely times when I needed to order, place orders, or um, get money out of banks, things like that, and I... Uh, did have a Korean debit card, but I didn't. I never activated it. I never used it. Um, our school provided them for us with our student IDs. I ended up having to use my American card to get money out of the ATM, and every time I did that, I got charged a dollar on my American side, and then the Korean ATM because it was, you know, not a Korean bank card or the bank card of the ATM charged me four dollars. So every single, and you can imagine, <laughs> every single transaction that I did out of an ATM cost me $5, and then every time I swiped my card, if I didn't want to use cash, if I just wanted to use my card, which uh, a lot of places in Korea only take cash, so you can see how that would be an issue, but the times that I did only use my card, I got charged a transaction fee from my bank as well for it being a foreign transaction. So uh, I wasted a lot of money just trying to use money which is super annoying so if you're only traveling there for like a week or so it's not a big deal but if you're gonna live there for an extended time then I think finances is something that you want to think about and I think uh, using a Korean card and figuring out which bank in America is more friendly to foreign banks is something you want to think about um, and on the same note uh, some ATMs just didn't work with my card at all so that could be a pain um, so there were just some days where I just couldn't access cash at all, and it or money in general, and it was uh, really, really frustrating. And then, uh, as far as ordering things goes, I or ended up ordering a lot of things off of G Market because I think G Market is the easiest to order off of if you're foreign um, and you don't know Korean. So I do know Korean, and I could type my address in Korean, but I still. Because it was being delivered to a dorm, I still had a lot of issues receiving items. And then there are some online shops in Korea that I wanted to buy from that were like specialty fashion shops. But um, a lot of standalone sites in Korea require you to have a alien registration number or a um, Korean registration number. So I did get, I did have a foreign registration number, an alien registration number, but I didn't get it until uh, like 75% of the way through my stay there. Um, so it may, I wasn't really able to order anything off of any site. They also require you to have, um, I think it's called an IPIN and an IPIN is hard to sign up for, um, if you're foreign. So that was also a pain. So if you're staying there for a long period of time, I recommend you look into those things before you just jump right into living there. So, um, the last thing are just sort of cultural differences, and it's not something like I hated about Korea. I don't think that label really works for this one, um, because I understand that there are going to be cultural differences, especially when you're going from a culture of North America, like the U.S., to um, an Asian culture, I think is 
one of the biggest differences you could possibly go to. I think I just went to a country that was polar opposite of America. Um, and Korea is very modern, it's not in that sense, but there are a lot of um, very deeply embedded cultural differences and just um, certain actions that aren't really done in America that are done in Korea that took some getting used to. So the first was like um, eating noises and uh, slurping and things like that. I know a lot of people have mentioned this in their video, but it's very surprising when you get there, I think. So a lot of people just chew with their mouth like open. Um, which I'm not used to because my mom in America, it's like if you don't chew, if you don't chew with your mouth closed, you don't have manners. Uh, and so it's always been a pet peeve of mine. And then also just like slurping noises in general are just so hard to get used to because I'm just like, can you please be quiet? Like I can't, I can't eat with those noises next to me. <laughs> so um, that's definitely something that takes a little getting used to um, are eating noises. The other would be. Um, this goes back to the staring point, but people staring and not really caring. Like I had a guy walk past me and look me literally, he stood right in front of me, stopped. And we're like all of this far apart from each other. He stopped that close to me and went and like did an entire rundown of my body. And it was an older man. Um, in Korea and you would call him like an ajashi. He was like, uh, I guess like 60 to 70 or somewhere around 70. I don't know. Um, but it was like this old Korean Atashi and he was just like, he stared directly at it. It was like a 15 second thing where he just like whole body scan and it made me feel so uncomfortable. And then he just kept walking like it never happened. And, um, I think that's a big cultural difference is it's not in, it's not only Koreans who stare at foreigners, but it's just Koreans who stare at Koreans. So people really just don't have an issue with staring directly at someone. Again, this is a difference. A cultural difference because in America if you stare directly at someone it's it's considered rude and it's considered um, you not having manners so that was another thing that I was like raised you're not supposed to stare at someone it just just uh, makes that person feel uncomfortable it's very rude um, so that was something that I had to get used to and by the end of the trip I was very like over it I was like whatever um, you know people can stare if they want to I know I look different so it's fine but just I think that moment was the moment that it like hit me the most um, that people are just willing to just openly stare and don't care at all. So yeah, those are the five things I guess hated about Korea is hard to say because I think that's a very harsh label, but um, I think that's probably what I'm going to make the title. So um, those are the five things that took me the most getting used to in Korea for sure. Um, so I hope this helped a little bit if you're considering going to Korea. Definitely, like I said, still recommend going to Korea. And the next video in the series is going to be the five things I loved about Korea. So stay tuned for that. Don't you know, go off this video and be like, oh my gosh, Korea is horrible. It's not. Um, but I did want to bring up some sort of negative points or some points that took a little, um, were a little strange to me at first. Um, yeah, that's where I'm going to end this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. And leave me down in the comments any questions you had about Korea. Um, maybe I can answer them in a different video or I'll just answer them in the comments if they're like quick and easy to answer. Um, and leave me any requests for any future videos, and I will talk to you guys later.